what's up guys welcome back to the channel I hope you guys are all having a great day so instead of working on my truck today we are going to be working on another truck it is however a Dodge and it is a Cummins so my buddy will be here in a minute and we'll check out his truck Turbo what are you doing what are you doing you going crazy oh I think I hear him coming There it is. What do you think, Turbo? What do you think, Bubba? What's up, dude? What's up? Alrighty. Well, today me and Connor are going to take this old beater 12 valve that I so proudly own and we're going to put some new brakes on her because she's getting a little thin in the shoes. So, so this is my 96 12 valve. She's kind of ugly. She's been beat up a bit. Gone through a lot of old construction work here. And the dogs are having fun. Turbo He's got some new hand. tires on this thing, some yeah. new wheels. New wheels and tires, 20 by 12 fives. Got a killer deal on him, thanks to my good buddy Foster. A little bit of stance. Yeah, a little bit. Might need some wheel space here. All right, well, we're going to head off and pick up the brake pads and the rotors, and then we're going to come back and get them installed. So we'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, we just showed up here to Baxter's Auto Parts. This boy got the hookup. You got that employee discount. Okay. So, guys, what's up? I'm here to pick up some brake parts. So uh, we have it on your last name? Yeah. Should be on your Brantford. Brantford, you said? The calipers, rotors, and oh, probably got all this stuff right here. Yeah, this looks like in there. Brendan? Yep. This oh, yeah, the same ones I got. This way right here. Where this one? It is 2001. You ordered me some new brakes? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Thanks, bud. <laughs> this is what my new dash is going to look like. All these gauges. That way I know exactly what's going on with my truck and this makes me feel a little more comfortable. Check these bad boys out. This is what he's running on his Dodge. He's got the, the white ones. They look a shame out there, boys. Oh, they will be different because these ones won't have the... Wah, wah, wah. You need to uh, rebuild California. YouTube yeah. videos. Alrighty, I found him at Tony's. There. So Genius here decided to order brakes for my truck instead of his because he decided that my truck's really awesome and that yeah. we should replace my brakes again. So now we have to go to another auto parts store to pick up the brakes because they didn't have the ones that he needed in stock. I know there's some fans out there that love this look. You gotta keep yourself on a strict diet to make sure you don't rub. Otherwise, that'd be a serious problem. That camber, though. Buying new wheels every week. Civic life. Alright, guys, we're just pulling to Tony's now, the place that I told him to go in the first place, but Mr. Over here didn't listen to me. You can't even see him because the truck is so damn dark. It's the tent. That's tent. I thought that was paint. Attempt number two to find brakes that yeah. properly fit my truck and not Connor's. Uh, so bright outside, he came into the sign. Tony's other parts is where I picked up my brakes. Thank you, ma'am. I told him they would. He just didn't believe me. I believed him. I just, you know, 
Damn. All shined up looking pretty. Shout out to Tony's Auto Parts. If you guys are in the area, make sure to check them out. They always have what you need in stock. Even when AutoZone doesn't. Every time I bring the freaking camera into the truck, his dog here tries to eat the damn thing. What's the fuzzy thing on the top? Oh. She thinks it's a toy. Because I have the the wind noise <laughs> reducer on the microphone. So she thinks it's a toy. Here she comes for it now. Hey. No! Drop. This paint's mint. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, I just gotta rub a little sunshine on there, a little spit. You're good. See, I like this stuff, you know, it's really quick and easy, you don't like it, you just, you know, chip it off. Dodge Good made restart. it. Dodge made it really nice. Yeah. You can start to get that nice gray in there. It's really cool. All this, yeah, this just, this is natural, it just comes off. Rust is not a problem. <laughs> Nothing we worry about out here. <laughs> Unlike everyone on the East Coast, we don't have to worry about rust out here. It's not that bad. Clearly, I mean, he's got some bare metal right here and it's not rust. Like not been rusted nice. yet and it's been like this ever since i've seen the truck <laughs> <laughs> that's sad and of course the tow mirrors are flipped out for an extra 25 horsepower per side that is so if you add that up you end up with 105 cruising all right so we're gonna go ahead and get started here we're gonna get the truck jacked up and on some jack stands and of course block off behind the back tire for safety reasons we don't want the truck rolling on us so unfortunately, again, I just recorded this whole entire segment without a microphone on. This is a curse. I love the microphone, but it requires you to do more things and press more buttons. So here we go again. So right here, we got the new calipers for his truck. Slotted and rotor. Drilled. Slotted and drilled. There you go brakes per my recommendations and his beautiful new brake pads because unfortunately yeah due to the uh, neglect that I sadly let her get to the brake pads are going to be maybe non-existent on these ones so we're going to try and get some new meat behind those wheels and get her to stop quicker so we're going to go ahead and get started on pulling off his tires here and then we'll kind of get into replacing the rotors and the brake pads and like I said we'll go over everything because it is different than my truck. This is a 96, mine's an 01, so you got a five year difference there. And this is a 12 valve, mine's 24 valve. So we'll kind of go over the differences on how to replace your brakes and rotors on a 96 Dodge Ram. Exhaust pipe. I don't know why you took this thing off, man. This thing's awesome. Dude, it sounded so good. And it's got the Plymouth emblem on it. You know, it's that's antique. <laughs> so if anyone wants an antique muffler, twenty bucks. We got you. We just got the rotors off, the brake pads, and the calibers. As you can see, it's got the line zip tied up right there. The old calipers right there and over here you got your old rotors as you can see very worn starting to get some stress cracks along it probably pretty hard to see but as you can see the new ones we got drilled and slotted gonna be a lot better cool down the brake pads a lot quicker better stopping power 
<laughs> you can see the difference between the two brake pads. This is the new one, and that's the old one. That's about half an inch thick. That's about maybe a fat eighth. If that. If that. So we're kind of a... Well, I'm very lucky that I didn't drive it any farther on those things because they probably wouldn't have stopped anything. Oh, and the new calipers. That's one thing we forgot. It's got his new calipers right here, so we didn't forget about those. I mean, there's not really a difference in those other than new versus old and used. So these ones have 200,000 miles on it. That's why he's replacing his calipers. That way you just get it all done at once and make sure everything's all clean and new. And that way, kind of peace of mind, you don't have to worry about replacing it later down the line. Um, so, so our next step is going to be, we're going to have to tap out all the studs and separate the wheel bearing actually sits inside this rotor and each one of these studs holds in that wheel bearing. So the difference between a 12 valve and their front axles and a 24 valve, a 24 valve actually has the rotor slide onto your studs. And it doesn't have the, these ones are meant to be easy to change out. You just pull them out, throw them away, put your new ones on. They're kind of a pain because you got to bang out each one of those studs and then push the new ones in. But it does make it a lot better. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have a 24 valve right now in this situation. But but only this situation. Yeah, only this. Motor's a lot better. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Taking apart the wheel bearing from the rotor, put it on the new rotor, and so on and so forth. We'll go ahead and film that process and uh, start getting this all put back together on this side. We we'll, might clean this up a little bit and maybe we'll wire brush a little <laughs> bit of this and, you know, spit shine it some, you know, spiff it up a little. Yeah, that dirty old leaky 12 valve, you know. And there's those rock lights I was telling you guys about at the store. He's got them right here. Yeah, turn them He's going to turn them on so that we can show you guys how bright these things are. Let me turn these lights off. They're a small little rock light. So yeah, as you guys can see, he got the all white ones. Yep. They are pretty bright, I will say that. Maybe later if it gets darker out, we can show you guys in the dark how these ones are. I do have rock lights over on the wall of parts. My, AKA my second, second gen back here. Um, just haven't had the time to get them installed, but maybe since we got our buddy here, in the next couple of weeks, we can get some more things going on our trucks and get some more videos flowing out for you guys. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started on tapping these old ones out and getting the bearing on the new rotor. So the lovely people who put his new tires and wheels on accidentally broke a stud. 12 valve life though, says the extra ones in the truck <laughs> because it's a 12 Got about valve. about four extras in there. So... so with these, you don't want to just smack the stud. You can. Sometimes they'll pop out really easy. But a good tip to make sure that you don't mushroom those over. Get an old nut. Thread it on there a few times. And pop them out. And usually I'll stop a little bit before. Just because now i got to try and get that nut off of there with it free spinning. And then once you get it mostly pounded out and you see that it started to give way, then you can take your nut off, give it a light tap, and there's one stud. You can see when I got these done, you could literally rock them about half an inch back and forth. But these ones are brand new, so they're no rough grinding on there, still seem pretty solid. No wobble, other than the face, but that's fine. One thing I want to make sure, I said this in my last video too, is this says front passenger. You can't see it because of the light, but yeah, you want to make sure that you put on the brake, the rotors that's safe for that side. Okay, there you go. Front passenger side. And also, if they don't come with a sticker that says front passenger and you need to figure it out, what this is telling you is which direction these slots are going. So if your slot, as you're, you know, set this down with your bearing face up, these will be going from the center up. The other ones for the driver's side, I almost guarantee you, will be going the other way. If we take a look at them. 
these people who have photographic memory so I don't want to pull it out with my dirty hands. These ones you can see go the opposite direction so that when your wheel and tire is spinning, it starts from the low and goes to the high. So that's also another way you can tell which side goes where if you don't have the sticker, but more than likely your part store is going to show you that sticker on there. Little tip for you guys. We were using this before, and then I thought, wait a minute. What if I just flip that over and put the studs facing the other way in the rotor, and it works perfectly. I got no small. wobble. It's going to be a lot better. My truck might actually make it out of the driveway, and I might live. studs in the new rotor with the wheel bearing all attached. You want to pull that up so we can show them. So now. There you have it. Now we're going to go ahead and put the new cal hook up the new caliper, put the new rotor on, bolt that back on, bolt on the new caliper, put the new pads in, button this side up, and then we'll go over to that side and I'll show you guys the process of tearing off your um, rotor. Buy it for it. You just have the dealership do it every single weekend. Calipers and brake pads, as you can see, brand new. Pain in the ass. Everything is not torque to spec. It's a 12 valve type. Doesn't have torque specs. Your caliper brake line will be a 11 millimeter. Your caliper bolts will be a 10 millimeter Allen wrench. Your big bolt to hold in your rotor. Not really sure about. Inch and 15 sixteenths or 43 millimeter. Was the bolt for the back of the rotor that held the rotor on, uh, as well as the back of the rotor. What was that? That one on the back of the wheel bearing. That was a 9 sixteenths 12 point. So which will be the four bolts that go on the back side here, which hold this wheel bearing in place. <laughs> Pit stop, our five o'clock lunch, Taco lunch. Bell. Lunch of champions, you guys. Two people who sit on the toilet for five hours. We don't have time to make food. That takes too much time. Yeah, we only have time to beat studs out of stupid 12 valve ingenuity and beat them back in. All right, so that's how bad his brakes are on this side before they're done. We just got done pulling the cotter pin out. I filmed it, but of course, excuse me, the microphone wasn't on. So what I said was after we get that bolt off, then we're going to take off the caliper bolts back here, which are a 10 millimeter Allen wrench, then the, the brake line, 11 millimeter, and then the four bolts on the back of the rotor, which hold the wheel bearing in, which are 9 sixteenths, 12 point star socket. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. I just wanted to take a minute to show you guys this process before the other side because I skipped on the other side. And then you're going to have your nut that comes off first. And then you have a little washer that goes in between. Don't forget to put that washer in there. I'm going to go ahead and charge the battery up real quick because it is dying on me. And then while the battery is charging, we're going to go ahead and... Oh, that's sunlight. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get the caliper off and the brake pads off and then after that I'll grab the camera before we pull the rotor off so I can show you
how that connects to the axle and all that stuff. Got the calipers off, the brake lines, the back four bolts that hold on, the rotor and the wheel bearing and the front bolt there. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull off the rotor here, show you how all this works. So as you can see on the 12 valve, the wheel bearing comes out inside of the rotor like we talked about earlier. And then your axle kind of hangs out here and then your rotor that nest isn't supposed to be <laughs> <laughs> slides right onto your axle there so now that we've gotten this apart you saw how bad the first ones were Just show them the first ones first don't show them the other ones first Where you put them? oh they're over here that's right so these are pretty evenly worn but here, show really them. worn show them like a view from the so we can see you got about a sixteenth left there. So not bad. Yeah. There ain't a brake pad left. Show them from the side so we can see how much. There, there is nothing there. That's there is... what it's supposed to be. Or, well, not supposed to be, but that's, you know, a bad brake. There ain't no brake left. Look at that, you guys. There's metal transferring. And now you got to look at the back of the rotor. Look at that. I mean, that's, that's bad. I'm just going to show you in front of the light and show you how... <laughs> How really tremendously bad this is. Too much exposure, but it's pretty, it's, yeah, look at that. Jesus. Look at all the dust coming off of there. And then, nice, all that break. <laughs> break. That is just chewing up the back of that rotor. It literally took a chip out of it. Here, put it right here because I can't see because you're right in front of the light. Took a nice chip out of there. And this, I mean, obviously you can't feel it, but I mean, that is rigid <laughs> yeah to say there's you lines in this underneath on the okay face would be an understatement <laughs> these rotors are bad he waited till he couldn't wait anymore guys <laughs> that's what happens when you have two jobs and you can't get stuff done and you gotta wait last minute please don't do it that was a mistake on my part, and, and it's dangerous. Very sad to say that it got neglected a little too long. That is not safe <laughs> at all. That is bad. That is bad ownership right there. Got done doing the dual front dually conversion. How do you feel about it? I feel like it's gonna be pretty wide. I ain't going through any more Taco Bell drive-throughs, and definitely going straight home because I don't think I have enough clearance to turn these suckers. All right. So, <laughs> on a serious note. We got this side all buttoned up. Here's finished product. New rotors, calipers, brake pads, same as the other side. All the studs are good. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the tire put back on, bolt those all down to 12 valve spec, and then we'll go ahead and thing I forgot to mention that is very crucial is we need to bleed the brakes and top off his brake fluid because <laughs> oh it's empty it's empty of course almost way too low you weren't impressed <laughs> by this Cummins already I was able to hook my light under the grill nut beautiful farm truck this light is. always looks flickering but it's not it's because of the I don't know what they call that, but the frames per second or whatever, that's the reason why that looks like the light's flickering. All right, now we're gonna top off the brake fluid with our DOT3 synthetic brake fluid, of course. Pre-stone. This stuff's really good at removing paint, too. So if you do the line a little bit, I'm, I'm going to go over to the truck, pump the brakes until some brake fluid comes out.
How's that feeling? Good. Yeah. How's it feel? A little bit more? drive now and how do you feel so far so good it actually brakes it doesn't squeal and grind anymore and there's brake pads on there so hopefully these ones last a good long while and I can work on other things other than the damn brake job <laughs> Way far away. You might want to save a couple dollars for that one. Nah, I just paying myself. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Pay mine while you're at it too, bro. Do my own custom airbrush on the side. Alright guys, it's going to be a wrap on today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I'll put his Instagram information down below. If you guys want to follow him on Instagram and check out his truck. He'll be in some more videos here coming up. I'll make sure of it. We're going to do some more upgrades to this thing. Maybe start off with uh, finishing off, taking off all this. <laughs> the old sticker goop from the this, trim? Yeah. Yeah, that stuff is a pain to get, get off. Get a nice little 3M wheel and... Next week and maybe we'll drill all this crap off. Yeah, that's what all. But that I mean, you, you do have to go wedding shopping with your wife, or soon to be wife. So <laughs> yeah, you I might need to get on that before that she gets out. pissed off and leaves me for it.